Hey, what's up guys? My name is Giovanni Balderas. I am the Exhibitions Manager at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. Today, uh, we have a very special guest, Jose Mr. Lonely Salinas. Uh, we are currently in his exhibit called From Behind Walk to Walls. And Jose, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Jose Salinas. I'm from South Texas. Uh, back at Life Car Club. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in prison uh, for meth addiction, but Thankfully, I used the, I was able to use the time to uh, draw and uh, practice a little bit of my artwork and express myself through through art and a little bit of poetry. So, so I I do my time. And you know what's so great that you were telling me it's like you really feel like the artwork really kept you sane in the sense of, of being in that well, situation. Well, through uh, through art, I was able to maintain peace and use it as like a therapy and and. To really just maintain peace uh, and maintain busy. Also, uh, a lot of it had a lot, a lot of it is personal stuff that uh, just to help me get through time and do do my time, trying to express myself in my art. Yeah. Well, let's let's jump into the work. You know, speaking about it. I mean, I think that the, just hear from you and, and kind of how like um, how much ingenuity that you had with the little resources. Um, it's really fascinating, and I think you know a lot of people don't know about that. So, you know, I remember you talked about like how you use floor wax to seal uh, drawings. So I don't know if you want to tell. Yes, yeah, so we, we we in prison we we really don't have too much resource. We're not able to go to the store and buy us things we need, and, and we, so I, I try to use a little bit of everything. At first, I used a little bit of ink and some color pencil and some pencil as well, and. Well, just really to try to put it together, and then, and in order for to protect the work, we had to seal it with a type of uh, a sealer. Basically, we would uh, buy floor wax off the other inmates and uh, use it to seal our drawings. We'd use it, make a makeshift airbrush, and just spray it with uh, with an airbrush. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. So, do you have any particular favorite works on this wall? That, that I really like all. I don't like them all, honestly, but uh, this one here is just basically a little bit of uh, a little bit of fun here, a fun piece of, with uh, just really sitting around doing time. Yeah, and I remember you saying like, you know, you you all would just spend hours drawing, and you got like the friends, everybody would just kind of sit there and critique each other or talk about the work. Basically, basically, we'd have an art table. Nice. And we'd sit at the art table, we'd drink coffee all day, share cups of coffee, um, share the share our bag of coffee and <laughs> pass it around and be able to drink coffee all day and, and then just talk about our lives and stuff and and we'd help each other draw and help critique each other to basically help help better ourselves nice. through our artwork. Nice man. Well let's move on to this work because I, I really want to talk about this work because you have such such a uh, really great talk about it. Yes, this work here was a little bit more personal because I, I was really going through a lot of stuff at, the, at, at this point. Uh, I titled it "Slipping into Darkness" because I felt like I was like, literally living in darkness, going through through uh, my my incarceration. And here I was trying to express myself about my life. Basically, uh, I was like the drugs and how it brought the evil into my life and how I was just consuming it. And I felt like this was evil, like evil uh, taking over my my life and family. And really, when we're on, we're outside in the free world, we really didn't care. So it was basically half the world, and how the drugs were here. We got the the apprentice magician, how he would like bring sorcery and magic into our life. And I felt like this was here. I was trying to say that this was my guardian angel watching over me and my family praying for me. I was literally going crazy because I couldn't deal with all the all the whispering thoughts in my head, the, the thoughts that keep going in circle. And then the dark nights that really this was was crazy and hard to deal with uh, deal with with what's, what's happening and going on and here I felt like Jesus was was carrying me through it all because I couldn't do it on my own and here was just uh, uh, my evil pretend to be be an angel but really not not so good yeah and here we had the raven over death he's really just watching watching us. As we go down our path, man. Thanks for sharing that. that that's a, that's awesome. You, you know, you you literally take us on this visual journey of your life and how the the kind of ups and downs and the struggles and 
And yeah. yeah, it's nice the way you laid that out. Thank you. Yeah. And so, yeah, talk a little bit about the poems, too. Yes. Um, well, I, I really couldn't, like I said, I was really going through a lot, and I really didn't know how to, how to handle the, the, the anger and the, the, con, the confusion and just being the separation from my family. So I try to use a little bit of poetry to express myself and help myself along with my art. I would literally, literally every day sit down and write, to try to write for about 30 minutes, and that would be my 30 minutes of just free time, just to write anything that was on my mind and anything that came to my head. And once I got done with my writing, I was able to start my day. I would drink my first cup of coffee and sit down and write for 30 minutes, and then I'd start drawing. Wow, man, that, that's amazing. So did you always consider yourself a poet, or did you? I really didn't, I never really thought about poetry very much. I never realized how, how it entwined with artwork, because it's all one and the same. Yeah. And once I was dealing with what I was going through, I learned to express myself. Wow, man. Well, let's keep on looking at some work. You know, I, I love these because, you know, you, you were telling us about like how when you, when you first came in, you had very limited resources. You didn't have like a, yeah, a yeah. drawing board, so you had to use these papers and they're basically all cash. Yes, we, we now like on this one, these few here, we really didn't have much at all. We had a little bitty stubby pencil that someone had given me, and we had our uh, indictment papers, and mm -hmm. we cut the, the tape off our, our deodorant sticks, and, <laughs> and we, we, we'd attach them together, and then, and try to draw with that little stubby pencil, and we make makeshift shaders with with the uh, toilet paper or, or paper, just roll up paper to make shaders so we can start start shading. Wow, man! And, and so, and you also said that you could also sell some of these to make a, a few extra dollars, but it wasn't much, right? <laughs> yes, we. I would take uh, anywhere from an uh, entire day to uh, a, a couple of these. I took over a month to draw. And these would typically go for something like this would probably go for like twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, and we would get this uh, in, in commissary. We buy soups and chili powders so we can have dinner. But really, I, I couldn't get myself to to sell my artwork because we, we spent so much time and so much love into it, and then at the end of the day, you sell it for a few, a few soups. It was it wouldn't really work, be worth it. So I, I tried to keep as much possible, even though I did sell some. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, and then I guess you know if you want, we'll jump on over here to this last wall, and you know this is another little piece that I love because it's like it's an intimate work that draws you in because there's so much going on. Yes, and then it turns out it's on an envelope. Yes, yeah, these these an envelope prison you can no longer send out envelopes written that are drawn on because people were actually sending uh, messages through the artwork. And they would be the wrong messages, so they, they, they restrict you uh, sending them out. So we would basically draw whenever we had an envelope we could draw and draw. We would draw on it and keep it and and not mail it out, so that way we wouldn't be confiscated. Nice, nice. And this is like one of the few like color ones, right? Like, yes, I, I I tried to experiment with the colors, and the, really the, the colors on the commissary were not very very well, very good. They weren't very bright, or so we. And this one here, I try to do, try to get some art, uh, some color. And the pen, the blue pen, we had to buy it off the stolen pen from town. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the officers, that somebody stole it. We basically, we buy it off on an inmate and we can use it. Wow, so they don't have like blue pens? And they don't, they, they, we can't buy the blue or colored pens. You can only buy a black clear pen. Oh, wow, man. And so if, when we had the opportunity, somebody buy, had a blue pen, we'd buy it. Snag it up until they confiscate it, it as much as possible until we ran it out. Wow, wow. So what were what are some other things that, that you all did uh, that we normally would take for granted to, to create an artwork? Well, in prison it's really it's kinda of like you're blending into everybody and it's like really losing yourself. Mm -hmm. So you try to uh, really hard to maintain who you are and not lose yourself in, in prison. So a lot of this would be like for me, for Valley Dodge Park Club, that uh, and stuff like this, I try to use this in all my drawings because I was trying to maintain my identity and not lose my identity to the system that we felt like it was being taken from us, that our identity. Yeah, that, that makes total sense, right? Because yeah. you're just a number in there. Yeah, we're just a number and uh, you blend in with so many people and so many different uh, characteristics and people, it's just like really crazy. So. 
like I said, you try to maintain who you are and not forget who you are because it's easy to forget what you're in the in system like that. Wow. Well, and this has been amazing. Thank you for taking some time to share with us. But you know, also, I want to bring your wife into here too because she's such a big part of your life. Yes, well, definitely. So come on in, Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, and you know, just thank y'all so much for showing you know the work here and, and being so open to talking about the work. I appreciate you doing this for us. Uh, yeah. It's an honor. Uh, this is basically what I had dreamt of doing with my artwork. That's why I basically saved all these pieces. Because nice. nice. I, I one day hopefully someday we'll do something with it or exhibit it and show it to somebody. Because I felt like it was a message that had to be told. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, guys. Please come out and check out his show. This is Jose Mr. Lonely Salinas from Behind the Walls. He'll be up for a few more weeks longer, so come out and check it out. Um, and thank y'all so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.